I realise I have come rather late to the party, but uh, I have only st recently started watching Downton Abbey. In one episode, and this is an, an especially memorable part even of this episode, the Archbishop of York joins Lord and Lady Grantham for dinner. And before the Archbishop arrives, Lord Grantham says, there's nothing so toffee-nosed as a prince of the church. And so they decide to have the Archbishop seated next to the Dowager Countess, the rather no-nonsense Maggie Smith character, to keep him in line. There has always been a question for the church and how it fits in with the rest of society. Does it go along with the way of the world, or does it try and challenge it? Sometimes you will hear people use the phrase kingdom values as opposed to earthly values. And Jesus does teach that the kingdom of heaven is ordered very differently to how things are down here on earth. The last will be first and the first will be last. What this episode of Downton Abbey gives us is the picture of a church that is less interested in kingdom values and more interested in earthly ones. A church that is preoccupied with status, a church that is part of the establishment, a church which is all about enjoying the things that money could get you. And this is the argument that some people use to say that the Church of England should no longer be the established church because it ties one of its arms behind its back. After all, how can the church provide an effective challenge to the way society works if it's seen as part of the scaffolding, if you like, holding up society as it is? And there are other difficult questions which are a lot less abstract than that one, such as how did elements in the church get away of abuse for so long, in part because of the church's status, which my people might consider elevated or protected. Of course, there are some who will say, despite the church's status, as Christians, we can accept the way society operates. And you may have seen pictures in the news of Church of England clergy being arrested at Extinction Rebellion protests. And you might be watching this and thinking, well, that's the wrong cause or that's the wrong way about going about these things. But still, you can see people there showing that they can provide a challenge to the way that society works. Now, the letter of James presents a challenge for all practising Christians. Well, it presents several challenges. It speaks about how we can tend to be drawn in by what the world thinks is important, wealth and status, which are usually linked. And it speaks about how superficial we can be, judging others based on outward appearances. It describes a scene in which there are two people, one with has gold rings and fine clothes, and the other is poor with dirty clothes. And we are asked, do we behave differently towards each of them? If the answer is yes, then the letter of James says we're at fault, because when we do that, we miss the value of the poor person with dirty clothes, someone who might be rich in a more important way. And the letter of James goes on to say, has not God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him? And elsewhere in the New Testament, of course, Jesus has something quite direct to say about camels and needles. Look, I'm not saying I'm perfect. I'm not proud of this, but I have been guilty of prejudging people on the basis of appearance in the past. It's very difficult to get out of in terms of our thinking. God wants all of us to flourish, and we should remember that. And not just those with gold rings and fine clothing, because material flourishing and sp spiritual flourishing aren't the same thing. Yes, material comfort is good, it's not inherently bad, and the letter of James exhorts us to help those who are without, with their material needs. But material comfort isn't everything. We all know deep down those who are born poor did not choose to be born poor any more than those who are born rich choose to be born rich. We know too that ability and opportunity do not always match up. Things like apparent wealth and status are no basis on which to judge a person, and accordingly the church should not be elevating those two things either. And perhaps it is beholden on leaders of the church to resist being toffee-nosed, to resist the VIP treatment. Even me, a lowly curate, when I'm tempted to think that my dog collar might give me a better chance of getting a table at a busy restaurant. 
because we need to challenge the idea that a person only has worth if they're worth something. God values all of our brothers and sisters, whatever their circumstances, and we should too. We need to offer society a different blueprint, one based on what, as I said earlier, some refer to as kingdom values. Yes, in the world, there are many great riches to be had, and if we are lucky, some may well come our way. But through faith, lived out in works, there are infinitely greater riches still, and these riches are available by the grace of God to all for free. Amen.